Well, it's lunchtime again out here in the woods. Actually, it's well past lunchtime. It's almost 3.30 in the afternoon, and I'm getting hungry. I've been out testing wood stoves today because we had a lot of rain and the fire ban has been lifted. Of course, I made a bit of a challenge with wet wood out here, but that's quite okay. I don't mind that. I get to have a fire in my stove. But now it's time for lunch. So what's on the menu for today? How about zucchini fritters? A low-carb meal made with zucchinis, eggs, and a few other ingredients. If you're interested in seeing how that turns out, keep watching. All right, let's get this meal started. I'll show you what the ingredients are and I'll show you the steps I have to go through to prepare this. I have a fire going in my stove. I'm going to allow that to uh, burn down a little bit so I don't have too intense a heat when it comes time to put my pan on top of the stove. But uh, yeah, let's just get started. So obviously the primary ingredient for this is zucchinis and eggs, but I'm also going to be using some cheese and some almond flour. And I'll talk about those in a few minutes time. Time. Now, I will tell you right now that the recipe called for mozzarella and feta cheese. I had neither of which at home, but I did have cheddar and I did have blue cheese. So hopefully that works out okay. So I have not made this meal in the woods. I have not made this meal at home. So this will be a first time altogether. So uh, first thing to do, obviously, is to get the zucchinis grated up. So I'm using my Kapilka plate that, that uh, today that I've shown recently, and this, this is a coincidence. I guess it's a situation of great minds think alike. After I made the Kapilka video, I went to my basement and I thought, is there a way of preventing the, my knife from cutting up the inside of the plate too much? And I had these really cheap dollar store uh, cutting boards. They're just pieces of plastic. So I cut one to shape to fit inside, and uh, I haven't used it yet. But lo and behold, when I released the video, didn't one of my viewers, and I wish, I'm hopefully, I'm going to try and find which viewer it was, suggested exactly this. And if I can find the name, um, then I'll make sure that it appears on the screen, because thank you, it was a great idea. And as I said, great minds think alike. So what I think I'll do, though, is I'm going to use the back of the plate to start with. And all I really have to do to prep the zucchinis is to cut the ends off of them. It's just a little bit of the stub ends. And then I'm going to grate them with this with my cut down little grater into my Kapilka bowl. That's step number one. So let's get this started so the skin stay on. Take that off, put that one on. These are a small zucchini known as a gray zucchini. That's, that's all I could find yesterday. I went out to the store, but uh, I think they'll work just fine. I've never used small ones like this before. Um, yeah, let's just get started here. So all I'm doing is just grating this into the bowl. All right, that's the end of the zucchini grating. I've got a full bowl here. And quite a bit of it on the ground. I, no one said I was the neatest cook in the woods. All right, what's the next step? So the next step is to find my sea salt. So here's my sea salt. Now I'm going to take some sea salt, about a teaspoon, and I'm going to sprinkle it on top. I say about a teaspoon, but yeah, just about a teaspoon. On top of the zucchini, and I'm going to mix that around with the zucchini and all we're going to do is let that set for about 10 minutes. The purpose of this is it will draw water out of the zucchini. We don't want it too, too wet when we go to mix it with the rest of the ingredients. So the uh, salt will actually draw some of the water out. I think I'll set it aside, put my pan on top of it just to keep buggies and things like that out of it. So what I'm going to do is, while that is starting to draw water out is I'm going to use my pot to mix up the rest of the ingredients in and this is what I'll be using to f as the final mixing bowl as well. So give me a minute because I just realized how dirty that is on the bottom. It's going to make a mess here. Give me a minute to clean that up and then we'll come back. So you may be asking why did I have to go down and clean my pot? Uh, Basically, this is my kettle as well as my bowl today for doing the, the mixing up of the rest of the ingredients in. And I, I just had it over the fire and uh, had a cup of tea with it. But this is not a review, but maybe just a spoiler alert. This is something new to me that I'm testing out. And this is the Kessel from Uberleben. Now, I previously reviewed the stainless steel version of the Kessel, and I love it, and I use it a lot. 
But now Uber Lehman has come out with a titanium version, and that's what I have, the titanium version of the castle. And the spoiler is, I'm loving it. It is just amazing. I can use it as a kettle or as a pot, the way you see I'm using now. I reversed the handle around just to make it a little easier to work with here. Okay, enough of that. Let's get going with the rest of this meal. So, oh, something else I'm testing out, just in case you're interested. This is a new knife, literally the first day out in the woods. This is the Rook F118-G, uh, sent to me for testing and review. I can't say too much about that. Well, I can't say anything about it. I just got it. Made from 14C28 stainless steel. Seems to be a wonderful knife. I've got nothing negative to say about it at all. It was clean when I started here. So... Let's get going. So what have I got? This is one giant clove of garlic. So this, my brother-in-law grows these, and which they're great. He has a huge, we, you know, we, we get a lot of garlic from him and we appreciate it. So I'm just going to slice this and the nice, the flat rind or almost full flat rind of this uh, rook knife is making quick work. It's a thick spine though. You know, it's 4.4 4 millimeters. So it's not a thin stock knife. It's not a kitchen knife by any means, but when you uh, have a near flat, full flat grind, it comes to a very fine edge and makes great kitchen work. I think I would have sooner crushed this, but this is the way I have to work with out here in the woods. I could have put it across the grater, I guess. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty small. Let's get that into the pot. Ooh, I'm going to smell like garlic tonight. Yeehaw. Mrs. Young won't be happy. All right, so what's coming next? So let's throw in... Oh, let's do the onion. We've got a piece of onion here. Now, the original recipe, by the way, calls for green onions. I didn't have any. Again, I just had a small piece of uh, onion at home. Uh, I will, of course, put the full recipe in the video description below for you. I am modifying it somewhat here out in the woods just for what I can bring with me and what I had available to make it out of, but I, well, let's, we'll just see how well this works. So let's get this onion cut. Yeah, this knife is making quick work of this onion. You know, I really like a full flat grind knife. I, I like my Scandies. They make great working knives, but that's pretty much all they're really good for is working knives. They don't do well at food prep because of that quick edge on them that does kind of pushes through food rather than slices through food. All right, now what am I going to do? Eggs. Let's throw in my two eggs. I'm going to use the back of the spine so I don't get so many pieces of uh, shell going in, or the back of the spine, the spine of the knife. Throw those in, the eggs, put that in my garbage bag, and where is my fork? I'm going to start by doing a little bit of a stir to get these uh, started, incorporated. And eventually the zucchini is going to go back in this before it goes on the, the pan. This is a good time to throw in the spices that I'll be using. So I have some black pepper. That's enough. And it did call for using some chili powder or garlic powder on top afterwards, but I'm going to mix my chili powder, actually it's not chili powder, it's Tex-Mex, in directly into the mixture rather than on top of the cooking fritters. All right, now let's get some cheese in here. Ooh, blue cheese and green cheese. Or green cheese. <laughs> I'm looking at the green on the blue cheese and saying green cheese, not mold. Well, I guess it is, it is cultured mold. Cheddar cheese and blue cheese. This may not be everyone's choice for cheese. It's not what the recipe calls for, but I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy it. All right, so that's mixing in. Now, it's still quite loose and requires something to bind it together. So this is where the almond flour comes in. So it is 
Uh, what is it, a quarter cup of almond flour? Let me look at the recipe here. More like a half cup of almond flour. Half cup, half cup of almond flour going in. Now that's starting to thick up. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice and thick. So the only thing left now is the zucchini. So it's been about 10 minutes since the zucchini's been sitting with the salt on it. And what I'll do is push that aside for a second. Let's bring the zucchini back into frame here. So having not, not having done this before, I'm not sure how this is supposed to work, but the trick is, or the, the directions say, pick the zucchini up with your clean hands, squeeze the juice or the water out of it, and put it in with the rest of the mixture. So let's just see what we've got going here. Holy smokes. There is a lot of liquid coming out of this. I would not have expected that. All right, throw that in. Can you see the water coming out of this or juice? I will tell you, this is supposed to make six servings. Right. Maybe two servings, two people, but I'll eat what I can. If I eat the whole thing, according to the nutritional breakdown, it still only comes to just short of a thousand calories. So that's, uh, you know, that's about what a meal would be. Can you see how much juice is left behind because of that salt? All right, I'm gonna have to clean that up in a minute. Yeah, zucchini all over my hands. All right, mix that, the rest of that in. Boy, it's thick now. All right, so this is now all mixed through, all incorporated together. Let's get it on to the fry pan. All right, I had to rebuild my fire up in the stove that I'm using today, which by the way, I do have a review coming out. I'm not sure if it'll come out before or after this video, but this is the Generation 3 flat pack stove from Seed Stove. So if the top bars look familiar, then you'll understand why. So a uh, quick note, I really, really like this stove. It, uh, well, wait for the review and you'll see all the reasons why. So what we need to do, now that hopefully will and maybe I'll throw one more piece of wood. Uh, it's better, of course, to cook on what coals than it is flame. So, okay, let's get started here. So what I need to do is put in some butter. This is what the recipe calls for. So, of course, I don't have any butter. I have ghee. So I'm going to put in a nice plop of ghee. Seems to be a little off center here. I'm going to have to see what's going on. Is that a little, okay, the whole stove is just a tiny bit tilted. I wondered why all the butter was melting towards one side. So we'll wait for that to melt. Oh, looking good, looking good. I don't have to wait for it to smoke, just for it to get hot. Once I see the butter or the ghee starting to shimmer, I'll know that we've reached temperature. And then I can start putting in, oh, I think we're there. Okay, that was good. Let's see. Oh, maybe not quite there. I think a drop of water gun in. If water gets in on top of the oil, of course, it just wants to boil away. Yeah, all right, that looks pretty good. Let's put some in. So I have no idea how to make the, how big to make these. I suspect that one is going to be too big, but we'll have a go and see what happens. Kind of flatten it down a little bit so that by the time it cooks, I can get it flipped over. So a fritter I, I know is not supposed to be a really thick thing. 
and I suspect these are going to be a little bit big. I'm going to put some gloves on because that is hot to work with. So what do the instructions say for this? How long? Two to three minutes per side until golden crispy and cooked through. Top with chili powder and garlic powder. Transfer to the plate or pan and repeat. Now, I, I will tell you that the recipe recommends that you use something like an ice cream scoop to scoop this out and that you, from that amount of food, you would get uh, six servings or six ice cream scoops out of it. I couldn't see the, <laughs> that. I think that'd be too small. Maybe it would have been more manageable to have cooked them this way because I think I may have trouble flipping this over when it comes time, but we'll see the next ones I can make smaller if I have to. So if you have cooked with zucchini before, you'll know that, uh, well, it's healthy, but it's tasteless, basically. There's not a lot of flavor inherent in zucchini, but what it does nicely is it takes on the flavor of whatever you're mixing it with. So the cheese, in this case, cheddar and blue, garlic and onion and the other spices that I put in should make something nice and oh yeah it's not quite getting there though not quite ready to flip though I'll just cook the one for you and then I'll do the rest of them off screen but uh, yeah it's not quite ready to flip yet it's too wet on top so maybe what I'll do is I'll just cut away for a few minutes while this continues to cook. And when it comes time to flip it, I'll bring it back and uh, see how it turns out. So anyone who's done any cooking outdoors over a wood fire or over a small stove like this knows just how challenging it can be to get everything just right. You don't want it so hot that you're burning things, but you don't want it so low that it takes forever to cook. Now you can see that this is moving around nicely but I'm a little nervous to try and flip it. Let's see. Ah, okay, well I got most of it over. It's not burnt anyway. I'll call that a success, even if I only got about 95% of it flipped. I'll give it another minute or two and I'll take it off and put it on my plate and get the other ones done. Okay, let's see what we've got. Let me turn the camera down to show you what the meal looks like. There are my zucchini thritter, fritters. I only cooked three. This was a lot more work than I, I thought it was going to be when I set out to do this. And a lot more meal. You know, six servings? Maybe not, but two people? Easily. I think that's probably what would have been better. Six individual fritters. So what did I learn when the second go round after I made the first fritter? Make them smaller. So that was the trick to making sure that I could flip them without them coming apart was just to make put two in the pan and uh, instead of one large one in the pan. So I'll be taking the rest of the mixture home because that's still quite a bit of a quite a bit of a food there. Let me see if I can show you that as well. All right. That was hot. Okay, as I mentioned before, cooking with zucchini, I mean, most people who work with zucchini know this. They don't have a lot of flavor of themselves. They have some texture, but not a lot of flavor. It's all about what you put with the zucchini. And what I'm getting out of this is garlic. That giant clove of garlic really made a, a difference. The onion and the spices, as well as the cheese. You know, you might not think blue cheese would go well on something like this, but it's working for me. Mmm. Cooking them in the butter until they crisp up on each side adds to the texture. Not having done this before, I wasn't sure how long to leave them on. I didn't want to burn them, but I didn't want them to come out loose and watery, and they didn't. They came out spot on perfect. It was just, honestly, it was just more work than I anticipated for putting this meal together. Having said that, though, some of the best meals are the ones you work hardest to get. And this is another great meal out in the woods. So th yes, this is a low carb or ketogenic version of fritters. You could do it with other things like potatoes rather than zucchini, but then it wouldn't be a low carb version. Uh, so uh, yeah, okay, let's leave it at that. 
I'm enjoying this and I want to eat it while it's still warm and I don't think you want to sit here and watch me eat it any longer. So what I'll do, of course, is I'm going to put the full recipe in the show notes below with the credit from where I found the recipe. If you have any suggestions or comments on this recipe or how I cooked it for that matter, if you have any suggestions <coughs> for meals you'd like to see me try out here in the low carb or ketogenic type of meal, please uh, share those in the comments section below. But I'm going to sit back on this now late. This is almost supper time. That's how late it is. This late afternoon in late summer, last day of August. Last day of August, so late summer. All right, folks, get out and explore. Take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.